Now here's the singing rage, Miss Patty Page. I joked okay. about that record, the Milwaukee Polka. Yes, you did. <laughs> because that, I'm told, wasn't one of the most astonishing hits <laughs> in the career of Jack Rail and Patty Page. No, it wasn't. But luckily, it did make the charts. Oh, Not only in Milwaukee, uh huh. It did? Yeah, really. Did you expect it would be a no. big hit? Well, I think Jack did because, you know, being from Milwaukee, it was very close to his heart. Mm -hmm. And that's why he wanted me to record it. Do you know how many people think that you were born in Tennessee because of the oh, loss? Oh, of course, I know that. But you're from Oklahoma? Yeah. We're born in Claremore, Oklahoma. Now, where is Claremore? Well, that's about 30 miles uh, northeast of uh, Tulsa. Uh, Will Rogers' hometown, okay. better known for that. Mm -hmm. And I guess one of the greatest things that ever happened to me was they named a street after me in Claremore. No. Right next to Will Rogers Avenue. Oh, and when did they do that? This was about three, four years ago. Oh, okay, so that it's uh, recently. Mm -hmm. It's nice Great. when, a, isn't it nice when a hometown does that? Oh, it was oh, unbelievable. The, the, the Jack Benny High School in, uh, in uh, Waukegan, Illinois. Yeah. I think that's terrific. Really great. It impressed my son. That's the only thing that has impressed him. <laughs> How much did you sing as a child when you were growing up? Well, all of us sang. Uh, there were 11 children, so uh, there were eight girls and three boys. And uh, three of us had a trio. And we used to work around, you know, the Rotary Clubs and mm -hmm. all, you know, Muskogee and Avon, Oklahoma, where mm -hmm. I, my father was a railroad man. So uh, Now, what did he do for the railroad? Well, he finally became a section foreman. But before that, he was just a worker, you know, on the, the, uh, the railroad mm -hmm. tracks. Mm-hmm, gandy dancer, mm -hmm. uh, that sort of thing. And he didn't uh, drive the trains. No, no, no. I have two brothers that uh, were trainmen, but uh, my father was the section hand. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he had really that little putt-putt on the, on the track. Oh, yeah. Yeah and used to pick the poke greens by the railroad. The which? Poke. Poke greens. I don't know what those are. Well, you're not from the Middle South, right? No. The middle... <laughs> I'm Middle West, Midwest. Wisconsin, Milwaukee. But no, but poke greens grow alongside the track. Do you eat them? And sure, they're great. Well, it you know, like. poke salad Annie, did you ever hear that No, never have. Record? You're kidding me. No, I'm not. No. There was a big uh, country song called Poke Salad Annie. Well, what does it taste like, Pats? Well, it's like a uh, green, but more like probably bitter like uh, escarole. Mm -hmm. The Italian green. Yeah. Mm. So what got you from singing with your sisters as a trio to the singing rage, Miss Patty Page? Well, I, I guess it was uh, luck, really, Tom, because I started singing on a radio station in Tulsa, and that's where I got the name, uh, with the milk company. And um, nobody wanted Clara Ann Fowler, so they changed it to Patty Page because the Page Milk sponsored the show. Mm -hmm. So uh, I had it my last three years of high school. And then Jack, whom we've talked about before, still my manager and partner, uh, came through Tulsa with a territory band through the Midwest. And he heard me sing and called me up and came to see me in a little club that I was working. Took one look at me and said, no, no, um, she's not what I would picture in front of a band. She's not sexy looking. And she's, <laughs> she's about as wide as she is tall. Mm -hmm. And uh, how do I get out of this? And I guess he thought he got out of it gracefully, but I must have been too dumb to listen to him because I took uh, an air check off of the radio show and sent it to him. And when he heard the voice again, he thought, well, there may be something there. And that's how I uh, started recording. Really, it was much longer and, and much later than that. But um, during that time, he went around to all different record companies trying to peddle Patty Page to them. That's hard to do, I guess, isn't it, to get to a record company to... What did they sign you up to a contract or? Well, at that time, you know, the record business has changed so much uh, now. But at that time, uh, they did sign just four sides, is what uh, I recorded, and they, you know, it's kind of like a trial period. And I think all of my family are the only ones that bought the four records, <laughs> 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 two records, <laughs> and there were enough of them. To I'll buy bet they're them. collectors' items yeah. now. You know, some of those discs are very, yeah, very, very expensive, they really are. man. And. Uh, that's how it started, really, uh, and I don't know if other recording artists started that same way, but that is how uh, Jack uh, got the contract for me. So then once the four records, four songs came out, they thought, well, maybe she's got something. And uh, until I recorded a song called Confess, where I sang with myself, did any disc jockey really start to... Uh, play the record. Did you ever have to go around to the uh, to the radio stations to be interviewed by the disc jockeys? Oh, all the time. We used to do what we call disc jockey tours. Yeah, I know. I was working at a radio station in Wisconsin, and the biggest event would be when um, somebody would come, one of the recording stars, mm -hmm. to be interviewed on the drive time show in the afternoon. That oh, was sure. really a major, major operation. Major. It yeah. really was. And 
he used to get up early in the morning to make the six o'clock shows, you know, drive out from Philadelphia, you know, to all the smaller towns outside. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then when it came time for them to vote to the top singer, they'd always vote somebody else. <laughs> 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 it was never you when you did all the shows. <laughs> I used to love that. But uh, it was interesting. Much different business, I think, then than it is now. How do you think it's different now? Or, or how was it different then? I think, I think you're right. I think it was an easier time. And I think, well, it was much smaller. And more attention paid to the stars. Now. I think so, uh-huh. Uh, there's much more money to be made now. Uh, your tax structure is completely different. At that time, you know, when I was making all the uh, records, you know, we were like in the 80% bracket. You don't have that anymore. Mm -mm. So, uh, and everyone talks about uh, there's not any money around, but my goodness, the entertainment business is just flourishing. The music business, uh, the record business, record business, the amount of money that is made by these new groups is mm. astronomical. Staggering. <laughs> yeah, for making records. Mm. That's I can't believe it. No, I know. I'd like to be in on some of that myself. Could I, well, like, if I would ask you, how much money did you make from Doggy in the Window? Could you give me a number, or would you give me a number? I would if I uh, if you knew if offhand. I knew. Um, you know, it's uh, we sold quite a few million of those, but uh, you know, I couldn't really give you a well back then. Figure. How, how, what did an artist get per record? Like we, uh, when I worked at the radio station, they said, oh, they get two or three cents a record or something like. Well, that. I don't know. You get like five percent of. Uh, oh sure. Ninety-eight percent of, mm -hmm. you know, and then your record clubs are um, separate. Um, so I would have to say at that time maybe they were selling for a dollar, which they still are, I believe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Something like that. Something like that, or maybe ninety-eight cents. But you get five percent of um, a certain amount. A certain amount, probably like ninety. Five percent of a hundred. Yeah. So I, that's the only thing so I'm asking. So you know as much as I do. <laughs> yeah. That's the only question I'm asking about Doggy in the Way because I'll put, you're probably sick of talking about it. Not really. Okay. Because uh, the other song that I love that you did was Old Cape Cod. Oh yeah. I thought that was a sensational. I number. love that song. Now, I read they, they gave me stuff to read about Doggy in the Window, and you used to go to the dog pound to get the mutts <laughs> and give yeah. away the kids. Is that true? We used to have contests with the record company, and every city that I would go into, and they would name the dog. And then whoever uh, won would get the dog that, uh, that I would use in the show. And there were many lovely things that happened during uh, my holding the little dog on the gowns that I wore. And uh, oh, yes. didn't yeah. matter yeah. what yeah. Yeah. happened. <laughs> <laughs> what color should I wear, Jack? We're brown tonight, didn't kid. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wear it. something simple. <laughs> and usually I never knew... Um, what name won, really. You know, we were out of town fast after that. <laughs> Didn't want him to catch us. When you first hit New York, were you a star then? Oh, my goodness, no. No? We thought that possibly because I did, you know, like two different shows in Chicago and uh, on ABC and on uh, CBS um, that everyone would know who I was and we got to New York and nobody had even heard of the shows that I had done. And I auditioned for... Um, Stop the Music and one other show that um, didn't hire me either. Um, so we had to really start over again. How do you crack that nut? That's a big market, you know. That's, yeah. That is the tough one. The record business uh, did it for me. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I want to just check on your name again. Patty Page, the, the Sing and Rage. Were you that on the radio station in Tulsa, <laughs> no. or were you just Patty Page? Just Patty Page. When did the sing and rage come? How do you think that's, uh, you, you know, like it's always Miss Peggy Lee. It's never just Peggy yeah. Lee. Uh, you know, uh, billing is important. Naming, names are important, the way you present names. How I guess so. Uh, that was done just by a continuity writer in, uh, in Chicago on BBM. And uh, I was doing a show with uh, Cesar Petrillo and the Honey Dreamers, who were uh, a group sure. at that time. And he just said something like, and here's the singing rage, Miss Patty Page singing, somebody loves me or whatever. Yeah, I don't remember the song. But did you like it when you heard it? Oh, well, I well, don't know. Well, tell you. <laughs> Mercury Records liked it, and they started putting it on all the records, and that's how it happened. And you worked with Petrillo. Mm -hmm. He was a tough guy, wasn't he? Well, I don't remember. No, he wasn't the union guy. He was his brother. Oh. One was Jimmy and one was Caesar, wasn't it? Oh, exactly. Jimmy Caesar exactly. or Caesar Jimmy. I think they both had the same name. Yep, but the one that was with the musicians' union, he was a tough guy. Yeah, I understand that. Wow, strike. I don't so. remember ever meeting him. No, no. We'll be right back with Patty Page after these words from our NBC station, so stick around. Offered to you that you've turned down that then went on to become a, a great big hit, and you said, oh my gosh, I wish we'd have done that? Oh, uh, yeah, there have been quite a few. Um, <laughs> the first one was. Uh, 
song called If that Perry Como did. And the the last one that I remember. If if Okay. Now, truthfully, I don't believe that had I recorded it, it would have been a hit. I'm just saying that that uh, I was offered it mm -hmm. because I think it's a marriage of uh, the um, song and the person, and also uh, Moon River was sent to me, <laughs> and uh, I even took it over to England with me because I was working at, there at the time to play it again for Jack. And he said, I don't think that that's for you. It doesn't sound no, very good to me. <laughs> very good to me. Yeah. And, uh, River, Huckleberry well, who Friend, wants all that? that? Sure, sure. Who all those corny lyrics, yeah. right? Mancini, who is he? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, well, those are the two most famous ones, I think. There were probably many along the way. I remember turning down one that nobody ever heard of was at the bottom of Lake Erie. And uh, that song is still at the bottom <laughs> of Lake Erie. <laughs> there have been many of those. Yeah. <laughs> at the bottom of Lake Erie. Lake Erie. How did it go? Could you <laughs> do the first aid for me? <laughs> How do you know if something is right for you to do? I don't think anyone really knows that it's right for them. I, I think that uh, we as performers probably are the worst judges of what is right for us. But I know um, that you enjoy singing it, but you never know if people are going to enjoy hearing it. Mm -hmm. That's the difference. Um, as I said, I don't think anyone really knows uh, what the public wants. And if we did, we'd all be successful. Millionaires. <laughs> Millionaires. All multi-multi-millionaires. Yeah. So it's always a gamble, and I think that's part of the excitement of the business. Are you doing anything now with this technology they have? Uh, you know, the, all the technology that they have in the records where, like, you can sing it once, and then they have eight of you happen and all, all that? I do one thing with a harmonizer on stage. They call it a harmonizer, and uh, where my voice is um, two voices at certain times. And I don't ask me to explain it to you how it happens, because... It still baffles me. I don't. I keep listening. And how did that ever happen? Mm -hmm. As I'm really singing. I've heard of that. And like, if you could plug in enough of them, we could have a 32-piece yeah. Patty Page uh -huh. standing up there on the on, on the stage. They sound kind of weird. Uh, in fact, <laughs> <laughs> what we programmed it once, it sounded like <laughs> Bugs Bunny. <doing> it. <laughs> if I sing uh, like the voice that's lower, then it sounds all right. But the one that's higher sounds just like Mel Blanc doing it. And I was hysterical. Yeah. <laughs> I couldn't make it. I started laughing. I said, no, Jack, we can't do it that way. It can't be the third above. It's got to be the one below. And what else are you up to these days? Well, actually, this... Uh, I mean, when you're not singing all that, what does a Patty Page do? What does a Patty Page do? Well, I live in a beautiful little village down near San Diego called Rancho Santa Fe. And, um... I love it. You know, that is a super village. Isn't it? I was down there last 4th of July. And Were you? that place is terrific. It's, folks, it's about, what, 80 miles uh, south of L.A.? Mm hmm Yeah. And there's no smog. Uh, it's just beautiful. And there's beautiful air mm -hmm. and really nice, nice people. They really are. Now, do you know why they call that Rancho Santa Fe? Well, you probably know a different story than I do. Well, let's the hear Santa yours. Santa Fe Railroad. That's the one, yeah. Oh, tell yeah. that. Yeah, that's a good oh, story. Well, they had uh, uh, bought this particular area to plant eucalyptus trees for the railroad ties. Mm -hmm. And they found, I don't know why eucalyptus trees didn't work for the railroad ties. Maybe you know the story. Bad wood is all I Bad know. Bad wood? Bad wood. I didn't know how. Uh, was... Splits a lot. Uh, oh, I see. Uh, so, I, I'm told. Yeah, I that's true. Bad wood. We always find the limbs Bad on, wood. <laughs> on the little streets. Yeah. <laughs> and that's how the uh, uh, little village was uh, built. And they uh, couldn't uh, make the trees work for them, so they sold off parcels of mm -hmm. land. Mm -hmm. And it was the Santa Fe Railroad who owned it. Mm -hmm. Wonder why eucalyptus, though, is no good for railroad. I but you notice idea. how railroads are running through your life, Patty? He's pa fair. worked on the railroad, brothers are trainmen, now uh -huh. you live in a town that, now was, I live owned, in a town that was owned, owned by, by the Santa, Santa Fe, Fe Railroad. railroad. <laughs> you ever thought you were on the wrong track, or should I switch, <laughs> shall I switch this conversation? God, I'll try I to signal you into <laughs> something else here. <laughs> <laughs> we should go on the road. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Do you? What, going on the road? Uh -huh. Yeah, the road is fun. It is. I, you know what I like about the road? The expense account. I like the... Uh, the greatest thing in the world is being on the road, on the sheet. The well, you shoot. see, I never had to do that because oh, I have to I, pay for it all myself. I know, but can I tell you, we went to London once, okay? Yeah. For 10 days, on the sheet. 
Really? We stayed at the Connaught. We stayed at the finest places and just put it all on the big yellow sheet and send it right to the big accountant in the sky. At Thirty Rock. That's where I lined up. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I'd like to ask. Say, what do you think of this music that they're playing now? Oh, I think there's so much talent around, Tom, it scares me. Mm -hmm. Really. Um, they really are very, very talented. Um, even with the electronic age, it doesn't take away from uh, the talent that these kids have in writing and in um, uh, performing. Um, unfortunately, there are some that we probably won't hear about because they are engulfed within a group, you know. True. And um, they will never be one person, per se, that we might uh, be familiar with. But um, I went to one concert with my children down in San Diego. I went to see Peter Frampton. I couldn't get over it, you know, really. The, the sounds that come out of just four guys up there mm -hmm. were unbelievable. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what's happening with the, uh, with the business. Um, uh, might be a little harder for someone like me to get, you know, get a record around. Yeah. Is, now I'll ask you, is it tough for you to get a record around these days? Oh, I think so, yeah. I think if you're an established personality, people just say, well, we've heard of her before, we don't want to hear her again. Mm -hmm. you know? Now, when you do your shows, your concerts and your appearances at clubs and stuff, do you do any new songs or do you, is it all... No, I do a lot of new songs. You do? Mm -hmm. But you've got to have a nostalgia corner somewhere. Oh, sure. Show, I, I finished the show with a medley of, uh, of about 14 or 15 songs that uh, were big ones for me. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, maybe some of them are only eight bars. But I try to include as many as I can. And if, I, if somebody wants me to do one that um, I don't have in the, uh, in the show, I'll put it in. Re do you take requests? Mm -hmm. Boy, it's like a lounge act. <laughs> well, you know, that's something, because the people that I've gone to see, like, uh, like Sammy Davis Jr. or Sinatra, they have a set act that they come out and do. And they don't want to have requests because they don't have arrangements where, uh, the, you know, the conductor isn't yeah. familiar with it, something like that, and so they don't do it. But now you say... Well, you no, no, see, this is a different kind of a thing altogether. Like, my whole show is set at the beginning, but at the end, where I do this medley, mm -hmm. and I walk around, you know, through the audience and say hello to people, I have spots in it that it's very easy for me to just say rocky who is my conductor piano player uh could we do uh, i'd rather be sorry or moonlight in vermont or something if people request it mm -hmm. and if i remember the words sometimes i don't remember me that's always fun what is the importance of a singer having his or her own conductor that's something i've always wondered about well, they are almost so much a part of you that they, you, they know when you breathe, they know uh, what key you would sing a song in, mm -hmm. uh, and you can start it and they'll follow you. Um, it's, they know when something goes wrong on stage. Um, it's like an unwritten thing. Now, what really? could go wrong on stage? Have you, had, give me, have you got an example? Oh, well, I could possibly say, say if somebody is talking or somebody sitting in the ringside going like this show me you know one uh -huh, of these things uh -huh. it affects um, what you do and and he will know it uh, my drummer who i travel with knows it not that they can change it it's just that you feel a little more comfortable yeah you got some pals up there you can go back and put your hand on the piano or yeah now what do you do when they say come on patty sing come on to my house <laughs> <laughs> does that ever happen you know what they do most of anything i get a request for that uh. somebody else did is Peggy Lee's uh, Is That All There Is? And they say, you better sing it. And they really think that I recorded it, or th I say to them, now, are they sure, I say to myself, are they sure that they came in to see me tonight? Are they gonna be disappointed when they find out I'm not Peggy? Mm -hmm. And she has told me that they come to her and say, you better sing Tennessee Waltz tonight before, I hope you're gonna sing Tennessee Waltz. And she does it. Yeah. <laughs> I said, but Peggy, I can't do your song, Is That All There Is? And you're the only one that can do that one. What is the hardest song you've ever done, do you think? Because some songs are really hard. Oh, my goodness. Well, or I... does it come easy? Do, 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 no. you, do you hurt when you sing every... <clears throat> do I hurt? Yeah. No, sometimes I can feel it from down here. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah. Uh, I guess the hardest thing that I ever did as far as recording, because I can't do it on stage naturally, is when I had to do four voices that were all written out for me. And I never learned to read music. So I had to really almost learn like four different songs mm -hmm. and put them together 
And that was with my eyes wide open. I'm dreaming, first one. Mm -hmm. And then I did, uh, and so to sleep again. And then one of my greatest, which I feel was one of my best, was a song that um, Vic Schoen wrote called I Adore You. I loved it, and it never became a big you know, seller for me. But it was a challenge for me to uh, read all that music and record it. Now, what are you doing for Christmas this year? I'm going home yeah. to Tulsa. Oh, you're going to Tulsa. Uh -huh. Have you got family back there? Uh, my mother and uh, about, I guess, three sisters live there. And uh, of the 11 children, I'm the furthest one away. And um, most of the kids live in Wichita, Kansas, and uh, Tulsa, and Perry, Oklahoma, mm -hmm. Oklahoma City. What a time you're going to have. Yeah. Now, do you have a piano in the house? No. Oh. Can you say, all of you sing a cappella? We never had a piano. No, we could play it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Not the truth. Have a super time out thank there. Thank you, Tom. And thank you for being here. Oh,